Matt Hall of Case Online here with Joel Clad of Fox Sports. Um, you've been popular here. I appreciate the time. Yeah, Thank you of very course. much. You bet. Um, a few questions about Case State, of okay. course. Um, when the Wildcats hired Chris Kleiman, do you remember your first your first reaction yeah. to it and what you think of that hire? I thought it was a great fit. I really did. Listen, I know that there was probably a lot of people that were a well, change is hard. Yeah. Especially when, when it's been from Bill Snyder. So I'm sure that there were people that were wondering about this. And re like really we're gonna go the FCS yep. route. I, th I thought immediately this was a good fit. Um, I don't know Chris personally. Yeah. Um, but immediately when I when I saw that and and knowing how he built his program at North Dakota State, you see if you if you backtrack here, Kansas State has had one blueprint for success. Right. In its history, not just like oh yeah that's right you know over the last couple of years. In the history of Kansas State football, they've only won one way, the Bill Snyder way. Right. They were the worst program in the history of the sport. They were about to be taken away from Division I right. before he came. And and he built them based on a few really good core principles, one of them being family. Play for the name on the front rather than the name on the back. The culture of running the football, take care of the football, play good defense, be tough, work harder than anybody else every single day quality walk-on program, so on and so forth. To me, that's what Chris Kleinman feels yep. like. Um, they had over 20 fifth-year seniors on their national championship team last year at, at North Dakota State. This is a team that was built on defense. I'm talking about the uh, North Dakota State. They won those championships because they were tough on that side of the football. They only gave up 31 points in the fourth quarter last year. Total. Yeah. They've only given up 30-plus points five times since he was the coordinator and now the head coach at North Dakota State. Over the same length of time, Kansas State has given up 30-plus points 32 times. Yeah. You know, so I, he preaches family. It's win the dang day. I think it fits. Yeah. It's not a departure. This is not a Ron Prince departure from what Bill Snyder was and, and, and is. I think that this fits. I think that it's going to be a quality transition, and I'm hoping that they have a lot of success. Really within that vein, and as you referenced, they're going to be built on defense and then an offense that's a little more traditional. Sure. You know, two tight ends, a fullback, under center some. Uh, of course, I'm a Kansas State guy. I love Kansas State. But is a program like Kansas State well off to maybe be the changeup, you know, to play defense, to run the football in a conference that's I think so. not all about that? I think so. If you look at the way Kansas State – was successful in this modern era of college football. Not his first tenure back in the 90s and early 2000s, but in the modern era when they were able to win with Colin Klein and play at the top level of this conference, they did a couple of things exceptionally well. Hold the ball for extended periods of time and play quality defense. Yeah. Play defense with your offense. Um, eat up a lot of clock. Don't turn it over. Don't get penalized. You know, all, all of those things. So when... I don't really care what structure it comes out of, whether it's the quarterback running or if it's going to be an NFL style or anything like that. That's a blueprint that I think Kansas State can and potentially will have success with. I'm curious. We talked last year at this setting about Skylar Thompson and Alex yeah. Delton, and you're a former Big 12 quarterback. You did it at high level, of course. So I want to ask, now it is just Skylar I mean, Thompson. I don't well, know. you know, I mean, starter for a couple <laughs> years at least. I also want to ask you sometime about your touchdown in 04 to win the game against Oh, yeah, I remember it well. Um, that was a tough one for K-State fans, I think. But back to the quarterbacks with Alex Delton, of course, now at TCU competing there. Uh -huh. What benefit is there for Skylar Thompson to be the unquestioned yeah. guy? I think it's huge. I really do. Um, clearly, that was not – you know, some guys, it doesn't bother them to be in a situation like that. I never felt like that was the case between the two. I just always felt like there was some tension uh, with the way that they played. There was always some level of the team was wondering, okay, which quarterback is it going to be this week or who's healthy or who's going to play the next series. You know, so for me, I think it's big from a mentality of he can take ownership of the locker room. He can take ownership at practice. You can take ownership as a quarterback, which I believe is is crucial because you've got to be a quality leader to be the quarterback of any team. If anyone says, like, oh, the quarterback doesn't have to be a leader, I say garbage. Yeah. Garbage. You've got to be. You've got to be because you're the one that's going to get the bulk of the credit. You're going to get the bulk of the criticism. Guys have to follow you. So from that standpoint, to be the unquestioned guy allows him the platform to hopefully become that leader. I'm not sure if he is or if he's not. I know that this gives him the best opportunity to do so. Yeah. I think the last thing I'll ask you today, I don't say this just to kiss up, but I love reading your comments about 
uh, the playoff and how to compare oh, yeah. teams and all that kind of thing. The, the Big 12's now been in, I think, what, two years in a row? Two years in a row Oklahoma. and three of the five. I asked, Has it been five? Yeah. Five? I asked uh, Bob it, Bowlesby no. today, does it does it bother you at all, you know, that you guys, the Big 12 champion will play at least 11 Power 5 games. SEC could play nine, you know, depending when the season ends. My question, I guess, is this. Do you think the Big 12 is, is on even footing now from perception? You always described them that way. But now um, they've been in a few times. Do you think it's gotten there, or is there still work to be I done? I think that they, they – the bar has been raised so high by Clemson and Alabama. Yeah. You know, those two teams are ridiculously good, and I think that that was proven out in the semifinal last year. I mean, mm-hmm. Alabama was significantly better than Oklahoma. Yeah. Clemson was r- way better than Bama. Notre Dame. Or Notre Dame yeah. and, and then way better than Bama. Yeah. Um, that bar is really high right now. So if you take those, those teams out of the question, which I know it's hard to do, but, yeah, I mean, the, listen, the Big 12 champ is always really dangerous. I, yeah. I think that they're on, they're on equal footing. It's just so hard. You know, this opens up like Pandora's box of conversation because until our sport plays a similar schedule across conferences, I just don't know. Yep. You know, until Alabama has to play nine conference games and play more than – three or four power five opponents on consecutive weeks at a time they've only done that one time you know they they rarely look at their schedule they rarely play more than three or four power five opponents on consecutive weeks that happens all the time with other teams usc the other week did it 10 straight weeks without a bye yeah so until that all changes it's so difficult to evaluate one conference over another I fibbed. I do have one more because how often do we sit down? I am going to ask about the once 04, a year. The o, once a year, you're right. 04 K State Colorado. You guys are down, right? I mean, you were yeah. so, you guys were down. I think we might have been tied. Maybe it was tied, but you guys had like 50 seconds left. You were yeah. way backed up. It wasn't even hail mary uh, time. Yet, no, right? it wasn't even throw... backed up. Let me tell you. Okay, I'll, tell, hear, I'll tell I, you I exactly hear, what happened. I need to hear what you saw and your thoughts about how okay, that all played so, out. Okay, so all I remember is you guys scored late. Right. Either to tie it or take the lead. One of the two. I remember the touchdown. It was a touchdown pass to the left corner of the end zone, but I yep. don't know if it took the lead or not. I and can't you remember. guys you guys were going from televisions right to left. Right. Okay, Correct. so you're kicking right to left. But for me, we're on the opposite sideline, so we're going right to right left. Right to left for you. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> and all I kept thinking to myself is, like, we haven't created a big play all day long. Right. And I'm almost certain that the game was – either a one-point game, two-point game, or tied because I believe all we needed was a field goal. I think you're I think you're right. I and think a field goal would have won it. And, yeah. and a field goal wins it, I believe, yep. or ties it. One of the two. Anyways, anyways. I knew we had Mason Crosby. Mm-hmm. Okay, so to me it didn't matter where we got the football. All I was trying to do was get the ball to the 50-yard line. Yeah, like I think we're we, thinking of different games I just realized. You're, are you thinking of the one in No, no, no. Ha- I'm, this is this still the one in Boulder? Still the one in Boulder in 04. Game winner he hit a game winner in 05. That's same type right. of deal. We yep. took a – we took backed a, up to like we a 60 in the, Yeah, well, yeah. we had the wind. He was fine. Right. But the, but the year before in Boulder, I believe a field goal would have won it. I think you're right. Yeah. Or tied it. One of the two. And so all I remember is going out there thinking to myself, get the ball to the 50 Mm -hmm. because we can try it. We're at altitude. Like, we can try a field goal with the ball at the 50-yard line. And so I was never, even in those moments, because we had Mason, I was never trying to be super aggressive down the field. And I dropped back, and we were running this little crossing route, and we had, like, this one kind of nondescript kind of, like, clear-out route that Ron Monse was running. And I'm telling you, guys, not in the progression. Uh It's a (laughs) clear-out route. Like, this makes it feel even better. I know. I'm sure, I'm so, sure you guys yeah. are like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I also have a great story about this yeah. game that I'm going to tell you after this. Okay. A clear-out route. Yeah. And there was a little pressure up the left side. And so I kind of like kind of dipped out of mm-hmm. the pressure. And, and somebody like hit my heel. And I feel like I kind of stumbled yeah. a little bit. And when I came up, like my eyes went down to the ground when I first kind of stumbled. And, and when I looked up. Ron was waving his <laughs> arms, and I was like, "I was like, oh, oh Ron's goodness. wide open," right. and I and literally I just like threw it to him. Perfect. Not only that, <laughs> Ron Monte, big play Monte is how we used to call him. I don't know well, if he it spelled like M O N T E I H L, yeah, I E H L or something like that. Yeah. Everyone's called him Montiel, right? Yeah, exactly. who didn't yeah. know, but it was Monte, and he never stayed on his feet after a catch <laughs> ever. Practice Except one time. seven on seven, 
game. He was always one of those guys that would kind of like go down with the catch, you right. know? So I threw it to him, not thinking anything. And I remember he caught it and spun and started running. And the only th thought in my mind was, Ron stayed on his feet. <laughs> and he literally runs for a touchdown. And I was like overjoyed. Now, quick story about, about that game. Our offensive coordinator was named Sean Watson. Yeah. Close friend of mine to this day. And he always had like some heart issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was in the press box. And the story goes, first of all, we throw, we throw the touchdown. We like dog pile. We're coming back. And then the, the sideline is like a frenzy of, of trainers and everyone like screaming about paramedics oh my and everything. And I was like. I was like, who needs paramedics? Or, you know, like they were screaming. They're on those little radios. They're like, get a, get a paramedic, get a paramedic. I was like, paramedic? Right. What in the world happened? You know, like did we crush someone with a dog pile? Yeah. No, no. Our offensive coordinator was up in the box, and as he's celebrating, he almost falls out of the press box because he has a heart episode <laughs> while Monte is entering the episode. So he's like, yeah! <laughs> So see, what Joel Klatt's telling you all is you should have not scored that play because K-State could have got the win and your coach would have been fine. He was down. He was <laughs> down in the press box. From the, so from that, stem, uh, from that point forward, that was my junior year. From that point on to my senior year, we always had a heart contingency in our game plan of like, who was going to call the plays <laughs> if Watson goes down? <laughs> Man. All right. Well, there I you appreciate go. the time very much. I'm glad you, you referenced the next one in 05 because you guys did it again when Crosby hit yeah. one from 70 and yeah. won the game. But yeah. uh, Joel Clyde, I meant what I said. I think he's you know the best national college sports analyst you're going to talk to. Uh, Matt Hall, Kaysen Online, thank you for the time. Appreciate it.